are talking about the new Samyang 12mm f2.0, a potentially perfect partner for the Sony ZV-E10 and a very interesting wide lens option for other Sony E-mount cameras. Start with field of view and the important question of what exactly is this? This is a crop body lens, so that 12mm focal length translates into a full frame equivalent field of view of around 18mm, which puts us right at the wide to ultra wide end of the field of view spectrum. And that's great for vlogging because you can hold the camera quite comfortably like this and still get a good amount of background, or if you want to extend your arm, use a grip extension, you can get some real panoramic wide views with lots of your beautiful background and less of your suboptimal subject. Then there's stabilization. The first we're going to talk about is catalyst browse stabilization. This is where newer Sony cameras, including the ZV-E10, record gyroscopic data as you shoot, which allows you to do really effective post-production stabilization. The price of that is a crop into the image, so the Samyang 12mm is a fantastic choice for using catalyst stabilization because that ultra-wide starting point means even after a crop in post-production, you can get ultra-wide and ultra-smooth vlogs. And most of those advantages are also true if you're using a gimbal. The lens is light and compact enough to easily fit on a small gimbal, like the Zhiyun Crane M2, and give you expansive views along with slick stabilization. Lastly, one big reason this lens could be a perfect partner for the ZV-E10 is the fact that that new camera has active steady shot. It is better than the built-in options on most of Sony's crop body line for more complex movements like vlogging. The big downside is a huge crop, around 43%. So the Samyang is a great choice because that ultra wide starting point means even after a crazy crappy crop, you end up with a decently wide viewing angle, around 25 mil in full frame equivalent field of view terms. You may also spot some distortion at the edges of the lens, but again, this is rarely a noticeable issue and it is a common byproduct of most ultra wide lenses. Let's talk bulkhead. The Samyang provides modest but pretty nice background bokeh in an arm's length vlogging scenario. It's subtle and transitions smoothly between in and out of focus areas. You don't get a crazy amount of blur, but it's enough for a pleasing vlog image and solid subject separation. Plus, with a very wide focal length like this, f2 in a crop lens like this will give you a bokeh look equivalent broadly to around f3 in full frame terms. An f3 equivalent is still a decently wide aperture for a full frame setup like the a7c that you're seeing right now. You will be pleased with the results in good light. Paired with the ZV-E10, which has great autofocus to begin with, the Samyang will do a very good job with face and eye tracking. It is time for a low light test into a darker spot. So this is pretty decent so far. I think you can get some nice images, but as we are seeing, the autofocus performance is just a bit too hit and miss. To be reliable. This is not the perfect low light vlogging lens. However, if you have even a small amount of light on your subject, the results will be much better. But what I would say the Samyang is overall a good experience and represents pretty good value for money when you compare it to other similar options. If you want that ultra wide view, then the Tamron 11 to 20 f 2.8 or Sony 10 to 18 f4 are both significantly more expensive as well as having narrower apertures, which means less bokeh and likely more problems in low light. You would get some zoom capability with those lenses and the Sony includes OSS or in-lens stabilization, but I don't think that those are attractive trade-offs given the difference in cost for my use case. The Samyang is priced in a similar ballpark, maybe even a bit more expensive when compared to the Sigma 16mm f1.4. The Sigma, however, is a lot heavier and has a significantly narrower field of view. For a light and compact vlogging setup or truly wide scenic shots, the Samyang would still be my choice. Whereas if you wanted leadership in luscious low light or better bountiful bokeh, the Sigma would be a better choice. The Samyang is nicely designed, has good autofocus good light, gives you decent vlogging bokeh, and gives you really nice close-up bokeh. That super wide view, decent bokeh performance, and compelling compactness are probably the three big selling points of this lens. And if those three match up well with your use case, I think you'll enjoy using it.